everyone welcome back to my channel welcome to sewing Tuesday so today we are going to make these cute flowers um, they are all fabric sewn on the sewing machine I did the slow stitch or free motion whichever one you want to call it <laughs> And I think they turned out adorable. And so let's um, get cracking. So first you're going to need some fabric. And I have some already pre-cut out. But I'm going to show you how I do, do them. So I tend to use scraps. So we're going to take these two scraps. Let me put this down. And I have these cutouts. So the way that I got this is this was just the bottle, the bottom of this. Um, and then these were actually, let's see if I can find them and pull them out. Die, um, flower die cuts. So I used a couple different sizes, but I didn't want these little indents, so I didn't cut it out. I just traced them. So that's how I got these. So let's, let's see, what am I missing more of? I have tons of the little, so we don't need to do any littles. And... I have quite a few, you know what, let's do one of these and one of these bigger ones. I'm looking at the fabrics, so I'm looking at the color fabrics I have. Some of these are just for regular, um, some are Christmas, some are non. So I'm going to do this and I think I'm going to do big flower out of this and then do a um oh I don't have very many little ones do I let's pull that little one in back in I thought I had more than I did okay So we're going to work with these two, the littler one and the bigger one. Okay, so when I do these with this style of a flower, just a random draw, I mean you can draw your flower, I like to flip it over and these need to be on top so your all of your front side or whatever side you're going to use it front because sometimes the back looks good but your front that you're going to use to the front needs to be all facing up that way um they'll match and then i literally just cut around it doesn't have to be perfect I make sure I get my V's really good and go from there have our big ones and then okay here's my we don't need a lot for this little so I'm going to do two so what I how I do that is I will flip that over and with these circles it doesn't matter whether they match or not 
So I don't bother cutting those up. I just cut the circle as a circle. Um, there we go. Okay, and the reason why you want these both. So if I say I have this one down, they don't match as well. Like there's just, they're hard to match them. And so you, um, it's good to have them both the same. All right, here we go. We have, now I'm gonna switch you guys over to the sewing machine. Now that I showed you how I cut these out. Um, we're gonna um, use the sewing machine for this. I am sure, positive, you can hand sew them. Um, and um, you can use embroidery thread and make decorative stitches. If you want me to show you that, let me know and I will gladly do a video on that. Um, but for day, today, we are just gonna do the sewing machine. So I will be right back while I switch you guys over. Okay, so here we go. I am using um, my Bernina and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple different styles. So, This one we are going to, I can get them off, there we go. We're gonna have one like this, and this is the big one. So I have some big ones, some medium, a large flower, small flower, large circle, small circle. Um, we're gonna do a large circle on its own. I actually like them better with the flower in the center. Do I have a large circle on its own? I do. So here's what the difference is. Here's the large circle and the large flower, sorry. And here's the large flower with the center. I really like the center. So um, I'm just going to do that with the center and um, not that. And then we have a large flower with a small flower and a small flower with a small circle. And then somewhere I have a small circle with a large flower and we will do all of those ones. So let's, yeah, that'd be kind of fun with the bird. So here's our large the circle. Let's let's see with that. I don't think that has as, as much contrast. But I do like it. So let's do that. It's pretty subtle. And we're going to do tiny flower, so a tiny circle. So I can show you guys how I do that. And then we are going to do a. I'm going to use this one. The ears are small, and we are going to put a circle in the center of it. I think we're going to do that for the center. Okay, now what am I missing? Oh, I wanted to show you guys two different ways to do the circles. So here are our, our big circle, and we just need a little for the inner circle. I don't really like that. Let's see how this would work. Look. Yeah, that will work. Okay. So, you want your on top of each other that are facing up. 
That one was not. Okay, so. Oh, we need just a large circle. <laughs> Let's do this. Actually, yes. I keep switching on y'all. Sorry. Okay, we're going to do this for a large circle. So, what I'm going to do is move these to the down below. So, I have this space. So, the first thing we're going to work on, and I'll have two up here at a time, um, is... Yes, Rose, I do not have a... Well, that's because I don't like that. Okay, so the way I do this, I make sure I have a pair of scissors with handy. This is a free motion foot. Um, it is used for free motion for quilting. And um, that's why it's hard for me. Like, I know right now everyone's doing slow, slow motion or whatever it's called. Um, but I'm so used to free motion from quilting. So, um, that's what this is, is a free motion foot. My feed dogs that are right here are down. And that is important because, and I, I did this in another video, with your feed dogs down, um, that gives you better control of how you move your um, flowers. So we are actually going to be doing a cover um, for a Sewing Tuesday that is all, you know, most of it's free motion. All right, and the other thing you need to do is you have to put your pedal to the metal and push your thing and do your sewing machine. You can't do slow, you have to do it fast. So. And then now I'm just making circles around. And then when I get to this end part, I am going over. Like I'm just kind of weaving in between them. Now I'm going to stop right here, put my needle down, and I am going to cut this thread before I go over it any further. And there is number one. Now you can do this with any type of thread you want. It doesn't matter. Um, I just happen, this just happens to be what I have in here. Okay, so I'm going to be fast forwarding and not fast forwarding. So certain ones I'll talk, uh, talk with and others I'll might fast forward. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so I did it a little slow right here. And you see how those threads are? They're not as form as this. So that's why you need to um, have your sewing machine go fast. Okay, now we're going to do this little one now as you can see I did this on purpose to show you <laughs> um, See how all of that is kind of crinkling up on there? The way to prevent that from happening, 
put a piece of paper under there and then you won't have that issue. So let's do that. I will um, just going to put that there. We're going to grab a piece of paper. Perfect. Does it need to be big? Let's put that down and we are going to go. It's a little harder to move with paper, but it's not a big deal. You just have to put a little bit more force into it. So, here, see the difference? Such a big difference in that. Um, and the reason why is because these edges will get stuck in here when you're when this needle is going down. So then you just kind of tear it off. You can leave it the that back part, but if you want. But there you go. Can't even tell now. And you want to do the same with this sometimes with paper if you're going to the edge, but I don't go to the edge with this. I get the littlest in the center so then I can cut along the edges. So I'm just holding one on one edge. And barely getting that center. Okay, so now with these these ones that are a tad bit bigger, I start in the center and go around, but I don't go all the way to the edge. That's good. Because I um, want to cut the edges. So here are the two different ways to do this. So, way one. is to do this center part. Let's cut this so it's not, there we go. And then I am going to pull this over, and this is my favorite way. Um, I'm gonna pull this up just a tad, and then I'm going to do a little zigzag around little bit and try not to get like I sewed right there yeah try not to do that but if you do it is what it is <laughs> okay the other way is to start and do a little bit on the outside and then we're gonna snip this I don't normally worry about cutting the bottom thread. I should, but I don't. And we're going to put that above and see how there's just a little bit of thread peeking through. And now, we're going to just sew that corner. Okay, so I'm going to switch you guys back to the other camera frame and I will be right back. Okay, so now we're going to make them all fluffy like this. So what I do is one, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to show you on all of them, but most of them. Okay, I just cut all these extra threads off. So for like this one, these aren't really 
sewing fabric scissors, but we'll make do, right? And I am just kind of every so often cutting these edges. Okay. We're going to do that with this little one. That back would make a really pretty one too. So I'm cutting, I'm going to cut all the threads and cut everything first, and then I will show you how I do this. Okay, so here's, here we go. So there are some, like this one, that looks just fine without it. And these edges will fray automatically. So over time, they will just keep fraying. And it'll look cuter and cuter. So to help it along, I am just literally picking off the edges. So that's how I do that. That's how I would do this, that one. So the other way that I have is, as you can see, I didn't get very close to this edge. Let me, let me get you guys in a little. Okay, let's move this up. Okay, here we go. So I didn't get very close to these edges because I'm gonna just cut them. You can make as many slots as you want. You can go in the center. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so. And I'm going to do the same with this. I'm not doing as many. I'm just doing a little. Oh, I hope everyone is doing good and getting ready for a wonderful holiday season. I love this time of year. We have Thanksgiving where everyone cares about each other and is extra you know have you noticed everyone's a little extra kinder sometimes during the holidays um but it's awesome okay so the way i do these and i do both of these the same way is i snip the inner circle now this is the one we sewed on first and then added the circle and then i go do the outer. Okay, this is the one that we sewed for all together. So I'm going to do the outside really quick. And then I'm going to come in and just make snips where I can because I sewed part of that so normally it would just be the one but I wasn't paying attention well enough and it's such a small surface that sometimes that just happens you know okay so here's how I do this water bottle this is a Tim Holtz um, mini spritzer love it um, I get them at Hobby Lobby you can get them off Amazon too. So I spray them, round up the bottom, and just rub aggressively in my hand. And then it slowly starts coming out. And then sometimes I'll pick the edges. It comes out a lot easier once it's wet. So. And then it will dry looking like that. If you want them flat, iron them flat. 
So let's do this again. I spray them. I sp and I just rub it. Like, and I am like going back and forth pretty fast and pretty hard. <laughs> Not enough pressure that you're going to hurt your hand, but look, I mean, it's pretty red. Um, you can use a toothbrush if you want, but I just find this way a lot easier and faster. So there you go. So that is how you make these fun flowers. Um, I absolutely love them. <laughs> they are just so fun. So, and um, yeah, I hope you guys get some fun, relaxing crafting in and have a fabulous day and know that you are important. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.